Hey, I'm Aileen. Welcome to my channel, a place to make art and feel empowered. Today, I want to talk to you about anxiety, self-help, tips for artists. Usually, when we think about artists or creative people in general, we tend to idealize their life and think that they're probably having fun all the time. But if you're anything like me and you actually like to make art or any creative endeavor, you spend days, weeks, and months maybe even years working alone. When you're alone, you tend to hear your thoughts a lot more clearly, but if you're having unhealthy thoughts, then art can become a place which isn't fun anymore. So today I wanted to talk about basic anxiety self-help tips for artists. However, of course, I do want to make a quick disclaimer that I'm not a doctor. These are just some simple ways in which I've learned to cope with my anxiety symptoms and you should always ask your doctors first so that they can refer you to a psychologist or a psychiatrist if they feel like it's needed. But let's get started. My first and main way in which I try to calm down my anxiety is to notice my negative thoughts and to replace them with other thoughts. So for me, it's really important that I'm constantly noticing any kind of disruptive thoughts. And this is like a lifelong habit, I think. I don't think you can ever train your mind to 100% get rid of those thoughts. At least I, I haven't. So I feel like this is just a habit that we constantly have to continue doing day in, day in and day out. Whenever you have a disruptive thought or kind of a intrusive thought, recognize that you're having a thought that is not logical to be having and then replace that with another thought like for me i've started to really tell myself a lot this is just the worst outcome that could happen what is what are all the other outcomes that can happen in this exact same situation and i can evaluate all the other outcomes just as much as i'm evaluating the worst outcome so like i said this is more of a long-term constant habit but i think as soon as you begin to start to train your mind to change your mindset, um, it becomes a lot more manageable to be experiencing anxiety symptoms. The second way in which I've learned to manage my anxiety is meditation. It's something that you can do anywhere for free. So that's what I really love about meditation. And meditation is really hard because when you tell yourself you don't want to do something, like you don't want to think, of course, the easiest thing to do is to think, 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 think. <laughs> So what I've learned to do is just concentrate on counting my breaths or even just listening to my breath, feeling my breath in and out. And if I'm focusing on my breath, I literally cannot focus on anything else. So that's how I personally meditate. There are many ways to meditate. Um, you, I'm sure you can watch a lot of different videos online and read different literature online about how to meditate. This is just one way in which I found is the easiest for me to quiet down my thoughts when I need to. The third way in which I learned to cope with my anxiety symptoms is kind of out there. I'm not gonna lie, it's using mantras. A while back I got this book Miracles Now by Gabriel Bernstein. I think that's how you say her name. She talks a lot about using mantras and in the way that I was telling you in tip number one, I think, like replace your thoughts. Gabrielle uses mantras to replace your thoughts. And one mantra that I always remember from her book is whenever you're having a lot of weird, anxious, intrusive thoughts, it's just to think to yourself, I choose peace instead of this. And I used to use this mantra a lot. It helped me a lot a while back. Because sometimes meditating is really difficult to quiet your mind. So a mantra is a way to still have words. That specific mantra no longer feels right for me. Lately, what I've been having a lot of anxiety with is going to the gym because <laughs> all my training partners are good and they're gonna kick my ass. And I feel like, oh shit, today I'm gonna get knocked out. So a mantra that's really been helping me in the past few months is everything I love, I do with ease. And I literally tell myself that every single time that I feel stressed out, I feel like this is gonna be so difficult. I don't wanna go to class. This video is going to be so difficult to record, like right now. <laughs> I was having anxiety before making this video. Everything I love, I do with ease. And I just repeat that to myself. Everything I love, I do with ease. And it's literally helped me so much because it calms me down. And like I said, right now, I just, I associate with those words. 
that's not always probably going to be like something I go to. But mantra, find a mantra that's right for you, and it could probably help you quiet down your mind. The fourth way in which I try to manage my symptoms of anxiety is to create art that I'm not going to monetize. The beautiful thing about the time that we're living in is that we all have access to the internet and we all have access to like creating our own career or even just hobbies or ways to communicate with other people. But what sucks is that then social media and all these things that we create, they become like work and we're expected to monetize them. And that of course puts more pressure on you as a creative person. So I've honestly, in the last year or more, I've learned to just create eight stuff that I'm never gonna like try to sell and not doing it for anybody else. And that's why I've been getting so much into bullet journaling. Maybe for you that's like creating like a meme page on social media or who knows, taking dance classes just for fun. Because as I also a double purpose, if you're an artistic person, you love to create art, you want to make sure you don't develop like, like that cynicism and that depression around creating art. But also when you're a person that is creating all the time, you also need a lot of input. So if you explore other kinds of arts that you're not monetizing, that's another way to, for you to get input without being so focused on what you're going to create, if that makes sense. Fifth way in which I've learned to manage my anxiety is of course exercise. We all have different levels of exercise that we need, but I think it's really important that we all do get exercise, not just for the sake of losing weight, but just for the sake of being healthy. And that also helps relieve a lot of excess energy, which of course contributes to your symptoms of anxiety if you're somebody that doesn't do exercise at all. The sixth way in which I cope with my anxiety is actually the most difficult for me, but it, it helps and it is to plan ahead. That means for me, doing things like meal prepping or even just writing out the hours in the day that I have available and like breaking them down into chunks so that I can feel calm about having enough hours in the day to do everything that I need to do without like thinking about how much I have to do in the day. Little things like that for me, even though they're really annoying and really boring, like I hate it meal prepping and I'm procrastinating on meal prepping right now <laughs> but when it gets to be the middle of the week and I meal prep I'm so thankful for with myself and I feel like that's almost an act of self-love because you're just making things easier for yourself in the future and you don't have to have an additional like thing to worry about that maybe you need to get food or you need to get home and cook food etc etc the way in which I'm learning to make this like a little bit more fun is to use the bullet journal. This is why I've been actually like low-key obsessed with the bullet journal. It's helped me a lot when it comes to just planning out um, and just using little things to track my habits or to track the things that I need to do, track the things that I want to do, track my ideas, have somewhere to write. And because I'm making it artistic, it for me personally, it becomes more fun. It's not about productivity for me. <laughs> I don't know, for me, things like thinking about your routine and planning ahead are so boring that I have to like figure out ways in which I can lie to myself so I can do them <laughs> without thinking about the fact that I'm doing them. The seventh way in which I have begun to calm down my anxiety is an emotional support animal. <laughs> I know it sounds really ridiculous but this is the reason I got Phoebe and I know the idea of an emotional support cat sounds ridiculous and I was kind of thinking that it was gonna be pointless. I think there are studies that actually legitimately point to the fact that when you are interacting with animals your breathing slows down. So yeah for me it's kind of like the last point, like it almost like a way of tricking my mind <laughs> into not thinking a lot of thoughts. Um, I don't know if that's a, a legit reason, I'm just saying for me, I feel like I'm so worried about now I have a living thing that depends on me that 
I don't have time to be thinking stupid thoughts anymore. <laughs> I don't know. And then like, of course, whenever I pet her, whenever I interact with my cat, like, I do feel more calm. I'm enjoying the moment. I'm more present. I'm interacting with another little thing that is just like, you know, pure and innocent. Yeah, definitely if you are responsible enough and you feel like you're at a moment in your life where you can take care of another living thing when it comes down to money, time, because it is a lot of work to take care of an animal, consider it. And there are so many pets that need owners at the shelter. So also consider adopting an animal if you're ready to make that move in your life to get an emotional support animal. Consider going to the shelter, please. The eighth way in which I learned to cope with anxious thoughts is my favorite, make time to enjoy art and to party. <laughs> if you're anything like me and you're like a creative, multi-passionate workaholic basically, you need to schedule time to party and to hang out and to enjoy other people's art because I get so wrapped up in where I want to be that I'm working all the time and I enjoy the work that I do. To me, work is play. But the party and enjoying art is so refreshing and so fulfilling on a soul level that I think we actually need to make time to, to do it. Instead of feeling bad about it, just give yourself time to just let go and just a little bit. Don't go overboard like you did when you were like 20. <laughs> the ninth way in which I've learned to kind of help quiet down my anxiety is to pick family people and family people, to pick family members and friends that make you feel uplifted when you're done hanging out with them. I don't know, I've learned that there are other people around me that also have these feelings of anxiety, of intrusive thoughts or illogical fears and when we share them with other people for some reason it's like we start to heal that wound and we can almost feel I almost feel like calm like I'm not the only one other people feel weird thoughts too I don't know for me that lowers a little bit of my anxious thoughts The tenth tip for coping with your anxiety is filter your social media. I don't know about you, but I feel so much anxiety sometimes when I go on Instagram. And there are specific accounts that will make us feel certain ways on every medium, uh, you know, social media or just things that you even that you just read or watch or listen to. Like I said, everybody has a different effect on you and how you feel. And the beautiful thing about the time that we live in is that we can curate what we listen to. So how do you want to feel? If you want to feel calm, uplifted, maybe don't listen to depressing music that day or that week. Give it, you know, give it a break. Maybe mute Instagram accounts that give you anxiety and make you feel like whatever weird thoughts you're feeling. We can filter out what we're listening to. But I think you guys know what I mean. If you get triggered by a lot of political discussions like sometimes i open twitter and i feel so much anxiety about all the stupid shit that donald trump is doing i just i just close it immediately and don't look at it for a very long time <laughs> and sometimes we feel that way about even friends or family or just randomized accounts that we follow online and take a break if you need to filter them out mute them for this to work, you first have to notice the difference between fear and anxiety. The way in which I've learned to distinguish fear from anxiety is how logical is this fear. If I'm on the freeway, for example, and a car almost crashes into me and then I'm feeling a lot of fear that somebody's gonna crash, or maybe there's just a lot of like wild drivers around me, that's fear. It's a logical fear, it's a logical emotion to be feeling in that moment. If I'm sitting on my bed and I'm thinking about how I'm gonna go to my family's and then I think I'm gonna crash, that's anxiety. That feeling in that particular moment is not logical. It's more of an intrusive feeling and that's what I mean by managing your anxious thoughts. Because fear is 
constructive and it helps you survive as a human being but anxiety sometimes doesn't always help us survive it's just like a byproduct of how stressful our lives are thank you for watching if you still are subscribing if you'd like to get videos on the world domination and follow me on instagram and i'll see you next week